praise God. Man, I'm happy to be here. I want to thank Bird and the Kingdom Work staff for inviting me. Uh, many of our young people have uh, been here through the years, and I'm just excited to, to be able to minister God's Word. Let's stand, amen. Praise God. And I could talk about LPAC, but I won't. I'll let you find out what that is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take off my jacket. And just push it. Amen. And just a little bit more comfortable. Amen. Um, uh, praise God. Um, if you open up your Bibles uh, to the book of Daniel, amen, and chapter 1, and you can stay with the open, I'm going to use probably the first uh, three chapters, and I'm going to talk to you about, on the theme, uh, since you're all youth workers, and I started in ministry uh, as a young minister uh, in the 60s, uh, part of that baby boomer uh, generation and and have been in ministry ever since and it just does my heart uh, well to just to be here among so many uh, of youth ministers and uh, that are in the kingdom of God. I'm going to speak to you uh, this evening on the theme, doing ministry in a situation of captivity. Doing ministry in a situation of of captivity. And just by way of introduction, I, I want to talk about the context of our ministry. Everyone say context. And context can be easily defined as the interrelated conditions in which things happen or occur. Let me say it again. The interrelated conditions in which things happen or occur. Say it with me. The interrelated conditions in which things happen or occur. Everything is contextual. Everything has a context. Everything is interconnected. Nothing happens in a vacuum. There's nothing, there's nothing abstract. Everything is contextual. And in the book of Daniel chapter 1, I'm just going to read uh, one verse in and I'm going, to paraphrase, I'm going to paraphrase, it says, Then the king asked one of his officials to bring in some of the Israelites, that's verse 3, from the royal family and the nobility, young men and women without any physical defect, handsome, that will leave some of us out, uh, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the science of the Babylonians. Father, we come before your presence and we just exalt and lift up your name. We, we magnify your name, Lord. We just thank you for this ministry and, and, and for all of these youth uh, workers that have come from the from all parts of this country, Lord, and, and they've come to hear a word, they, they've come uh, for, for fellowship, they've come to, to be inspired, to be exhorted, Lord, they've come to be corrected, they've come to be edified, they've come to be consoled, Lord, so we just uh, uh, pray that at this moment you just may... Uh, Lord, take me uh, aside if, if it's possible. Help me transcend my human conditioning, uh, all of the molding, all of the baggage that comes with me. That, that even if for one holy moment your word may come through pure, thus saith the Lord, for, for some life in a, in a concrete way, in a very specific way. Your word, Lord, that, that's a creative word. Uh, that word that became flesh, uh, that that word may become flesh uh, in someone's life tonight, that you may speak uh, all to their inner person, those that are vacillating, those that are ambivalent, those that are going through turmoil and conflict, uh, those that are asking for signs, oh Lord, uh, uh, to move to other levels uh, in their ministry, those that, that are asking for specific uh, guidance and direction that, oh Lord, that, that even among all the rhetoric and the cliches that, that possibly I'm about to pronounce, uh, 
that they may find one word, one sentence, uh, one phrase uh, that may speak to their heart. We're going to give you the glory, Lord. Uh, we're going to lift you up, Lord. We're going to lift you up. Uh, we're going to lift you up. You've promised, you've promised that if we lift you up, oh, if we lift you up, that you will draw, Lord, that you will draw, that you will draw. So, Lord, uh, we yield to you, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Doing ministry in, in a situation of captivity. The context of our ministry is captivity. We live in a fallen world with fallen structures. Uh, uh, we live in a situation that where people are spiritually and socially and economically and politically and culturally captive. We live... Uh, in the context of captivity, God chose the nation of Israel to be the witnesses for his glory. They were to fill the, the world with his knowledge, but they failed miserably. Can you say amen? They enclosed themselves within their own borders. Uh, they developed a spirit of superiority and arrogance. Uh, they looked at the other nations as dogs. Uh, and, and they resisted God's will. Uh, and, and, and you hear the prophetic word in Isaiah. All the, uh, saying, uh, I, I, I lifted up the children of Israel, but they rebelled against me. They're a rebellious house. Uh, and he even goes to say that... That, that animals showed more gratitude than they did. And, and through Jeremiah's, uh, he, he, he raises up the prophetic voice and he says, Stand ye in the waves uh, and ask from the old path, What is my will for your lives? But they say, We won't ask, we won't stand, we won't stop. But, but God is such a, a, a good God that, that the prophetic voice, uh, His word, even when we disobey, obey, even when we don't hear it, he consistently is speaking to us. Uh, and he said through Jeremiah's look, an army's going to come from the north. You're going to be taken captive uh, instead of receiving the word. They called him a traitor. Amen. They called him pessimistic. Uh, they said he lacked patriotic fervor. But one thing is sure. And this you can count on, my brothers and sisters, that what God says will come to pass. If you believe this, raise your hand and say glory to God. What God says will come to pass. And in the year 597, the king of Babylon came and partially destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, and, and he led the captives, uh, uh, Israelites, into Babylon. And, and there's a legend, a tradition that says that the last thing that was destroyed was the temple. And the white curtain that separated the holy place from the holy of holies uh, caught on fire. And you would hear the Israelites screaming, the glory has departed, the glory has departed. Isn't it sad when God's hand departs from a nation, departs from people, when God says, I've had enough, I've spoken to you, you've resisted, now I have to deal with you another way. Praise God. Praise God. He took them into captivity. And some people, they try to romanticize captivity. Isn't that something? Most of us that come out of communities of color, we've seen pictures about the slaves on TV. And they're singing with banjos, right? With guitars, and they seem all happy, right? We know that's a lie of the devil. There's nothing romantic about oppression. Say amen. There's nothing romantic about dehumanization. Uh, there's nothing romantic about stripping people of their self-respect and dignity. There's nothing romantic about disenfranchisement and, 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 and taking people and, and reducing them to subhuman levels. Uh, there's nothing romantic about that. Captivity is brutal. Captivity is ugly. Say amen. Amen. 
It's so sad that even the Babylonian soldiers uh, would ask the Israelites, why don't you sing uh, some of those songs because their hymn book had become uh, universally famous. Uh, and they asked them, why don't you sing uh, some of those songs? Uh, and their response was, how can we sing to God uh, in a strange land? How can we sing if, if we know that we're out of the will of God? How can we sing if we know that, that, that we're in the midst of of a society uh, that's oppressive and brutal. Praise God. Praise God. There is typical oppressor, what I call typical oppressor methodology, oppression 101. It hasn't changed much uh, when they got into captivity. The king said, let's take the best among the captives. Amen. Let's take the best that they got. Let's take the brightest. Uh, let, let, let's take those with, with, with intellectual capacity. Let's even take the cute ones. Uh, praise God. And let's take them. And then I'm going to organize them. And then I'm going to use them to control the rest. Isn't that oppression 101? Isn't that the way oppressors have always worked? Don't get silent on me. Say amen. They always work the same way. He said, let's take the best of the Israelites and let's educate them in the language and in the sciences of the Babylonians. Let's take the best that they got and let's assimilate them. Let's take the best that they got and let's acculturate them. Let's take the best that they got and let's teach them the tools of the empire. Let's teach, let's give them these tools and, and let's open up the empire to them. Praise God. Let's make them upward mobile. Praise God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with upward mobility. Don't get silent on me. I know you're all upward mobile in the audience. Praise God. There's nothing intrinsically sinful with upward mobility. God wants you to grow. Say amen. God wants the lawyers. God wants the doctors. God wants the decision makers. Raise your hand and say glory to God. Amen. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with upward mobility. Amen. Praise God. But when the enemy tries to acculturate you, amen, when he tries to assimilate you, when he tries to make you forget who you are, when he tries to give you a new identity, when he tries to change your name, uh, when he gives you new names, uh, when he tries to change uh, your loyalties uh, 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 to new gods, praise God. When he tries to change your diet, amen, uh, praise the Lord. When he tries to change uh, your lifestyle, at the root of it, at the root of it, is trying to make you forget trying to make the three Hebrew children forget their own traditions, their own culture, their own historical process. He was trying to make them forget the God of Abraham. Say amen. He was trying to make them forget the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses. He was trying to change their history. He was trying to give them a new history. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with being educated in the language and the science of the Babylonians. Those are the tools of the empire. We need to be upward mobile. If God has given you access to the empire, use the tools. Praise God. Master the tools. Amen. Be about excellence. Hallelujah. Learn as much as you can. Praise God. And that's what the three Hebrew children did. They mastered the tools. Amen. But they rejected the diet. I'm going to say more about that later. Okay. Remember, they rejected the diet. They said, give me 10 days and check on us after and see if we're just as good as all those other folks uh, 
Give me 10 days. Uh, I resolve not to defile myself. Uh, I'll take the tools of the empire. I'll take the science. I'll take the, I'll take the literature. But I won't take the diet. Amen. Give us some time. And then check on us. And you know the, the story after 10 days. They had a dialogue with the king. Amen. That's in verse uh, 19. And it says, in every manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Praise God. Be faithful to God. Be loyal to God. Resolve not to contaminate yourself. And when you dialogue with power, you'll shine. You'll shine. You shine, praise God. If you stay loyal, when you interact with power, you'll shine, praise God. When you come up against power, you'll shine. When you speak to power, you'll shine. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, if you stay loyal, you'll shine. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Raise your hand and say hallelujah. You'll shine. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They were, amen, promoted. They mastered the tools of the empire. You know the story. They were put over provinces. They, upward mobility. They were upward mobility yuppie Israelites. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. They were living large. Come on, say amen. Praise God. They were making it. They were making it in the empire. Amen. Come on, y'all know y'all the best. Praise God. We got some of y'all here. Amen. This evening. Say amen. Say amen. God has chosen you. He's opened up the doors for you. He's given you access to power. He's given you access to, to, to growth. God has done it. Can you praise him for doing it? Man, praise God. Praise God. He's brought you here. Access to resources. Young boy like me, born in East Harlem, El Barrio. Praise God. Speaking all over the country. Amen. God does that. Amen. God does that. Praise the Lord. He's brought you this far. You're, you're in awe of where God has brought you. Can you raise your hand and say glory to God? Man, man. He's given you the tools of the empire. And you're growing. He's putting you over stuff. Nothing intrinsically wrong with that. Amen. But something happened. The king had a dream. And in his dream, he sees this statue, and he goes so upset, chapter 2, and he, co and he convenes all his astrologers and magicians, and all his wise men, and, and Daniel, and the three Hebrew children were among them. Amen. Imagine if Daniel and the three Hebrew children were living now. Boy, they'd be in trouble, boy. We'd be judging them a dime a minute, amen? What you doing hanging out with those astrologers? What are you doing hanging out with those magicians? They were with everybody in there. The king didn't know. He just considered them spiritual like everybody else. They were in there with santeros. Now it's easy. Praise God. Amen. They were in there with everybody else. Just other wise men. Amen. And the king convened them. And he said, I had a dream. And I want you to reveal this dream. And the dialogue is interesting. Because this is the way the world, you workers, listen. This is the way the world dialogues with its people. He convened them. He said, I want you to reveal the dream. And all the astrologers and the magicians said, okay, tell us the dream, O king, and we'll interpret it. And you know what the king answered? I'm not telling you the dream so you can conspire to lie to me. That's relationships in the world. No trust. Say amen. No confidence. Praise God. Rooted in envy and blind ambition. No trust between the king and his advisors. That's the ways of the world. Lord, save us. Can you say amen? 
Lord, save us from those type of relationships. Lord, save us from those type of connections where there's no trust. said, I'm not going to tell you the dream, so you'll lie to me. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is good. Listen, chapter 2, verse 10. The astrologers answered the king, there is not a man on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king, what the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among men. Praise God. What a confession. Amen. Amen. The, the, these are the, this is the wisdom of the world, the wise of the world, telling their leader what you ask is too difficult. No one can reveal this except the gods, and they don't live among men. But I want to answer them. Amen. Their God doesn't live among men, but ours does. Ours does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know that our God lives above men. He understands the human situation. He understands the human context. Hallelujah. Praise God. He understands you when you cry. Amen. He understands you when you weep. He understands you when you feel rejected. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that Jesus lives among men? Can you raise your hand and praise him? Can you praise him for living among men? Can you praise him for understanding you? He understands your burdens working with your people. He lives your reality. Praise God. The gods of the world are bankrupt. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Doing ministry in a situation of captivity. You have to understand the relationships in the world. The wisdom of the world. Bankrupt. Amen. So he decreed that they should all die. One of his officers went to look for Daniel. They were going to die too. And then Daniel, amen, heard this. And if you look at chapter 2, verse 14, he went to the official and it says, With great wisdom and tact. Amen. Wisdom and tact. A wisdom and tact. Amen. Some of us get too emotional. Come on, say amen. Amen. But, but with tact, with wisdom, with discernment. Amen. Praise God. He went and he said, look, I want to talk to the king. And he asked him for some time. And he went back to his prayer team. Amen. He went back to the three Hebrew young people. He said, look, we're in trouble. We're going to die. <laughs> That's what he probably said, right? We die. <laughs> if something don't happen here. We're going to die. Praise God. But let's ask God. Amen. Let's pray to God. Let's ask God. Amen. Praise God. I want you to go away with, with this. I want you to believe that prayer is always better than panic. Amen. Pray. Panic feeds hopelessness. Prayer feeds hope. Praise God. Amen. How many have ever panicked? Raise your hand. Man, I panic. Oh, my God. I've been in situ cash flow situations. You know what that's about, Bert, right? People got to get paid. I don't have no money. You know they're going to blame the CEO. You right? Panic, man. Then I said, no, I got to pray. <laughs> Let me start praying. This prayer feeds your hope. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. They prayed. And that night, the Bible says, we, we read the scripture, and it's so interesting when we reread it. It says that the Lord gave him the answer. And you know what he did immediately? I love it. Immediately when the answer comes, uh, the Bible says, uh, let, let me read, 19. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise. But look at the principle. The principle is God answered and he went right to praise. Sometimes we get so excited when God answers that we start testifying before we start praising. Praise God. Praise God. 
That happens to me. I get so excited. I start telling people before I give glory and honor and praise and I exalt the mighty name of God. He's worthy. Raise your hand and say, He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. He praised and then he went and he told the official, look, I, I want to tell the king I got the answer. So he announced them. I got a young man from, from those, amen, Jewish boys. Amen. And, and, and he got the answer. And when he comes in, uh, the king says, are you the one that, that can answer? And, he, and Daniel, no self-promotion, praise God. No self-promotion. He says, look, what you, what you want to know, no astrologer, no magician, no wise man. It's not me, but there's a God in heaven. Hallelujah. There's a God in heaven uh, promoting God, giving glory to God. It's not about me. It's about him. Say amen. I'm lifting him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God answered. You know the story. Man, he, he promoted them. And they uh, were put over provinces. Doing ministry in a situation of captivity. Promoted them when they were at the edge of death. And I wish this was the end of the story, but it's not. The king has another dream and he sees a statue, a man, and he asks us, uh, um, who can answer it? And, and Daniel comes and, and he reveals it. And now he wants everybody at the sound of the trumpet, at the sound of the flute, all subjects of the kingdom have to bow down. Praise God. There's nothing wrong with upward mobility. Amen? But there's too high a price to pay for upward mobility. There's nothing wrong with growing. Say amen. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. There's nothing wrong with using the tools of the empire. But there will come a time, amen, in our lives when we're going to be tested. Where we're going to be asked to bow. Praise God. Praise God. Here they were comfortable. Amen. Living that good life. Say amen. Governors over provinces. Amen. Blessed beyond belief. Moving up. Praise God. But now they were asked to bow. The moment they were asked to bow, some of their enemies came and said, you know those Jews, uh, they're not bowing. They're not bowing. They're not bowing. And the king summoned them and he said, is it true? Is it true that you're not bowing to my God? Is it true? Praise God. And the three Hebrew children, look, they had their priorities, right? Amen. They had their priorities, right? Uh, they said, he said, which God will deliver me? Will deliver you from my hands? They looked at him and said, let it be known to you, O king, that the God that we serve... He'll deliver us from your hand. But if he doesn't, we're not bowing. We will not bow. Praise God. Praise God. Doing ministry in a situation of captivity. You can grow. You can be in college. You can be doing graduate work. You can work in that, in that corporation. You can work in that church. You can move up. You can move up. On that ecclesiastical ladder, you, you can reach the top, you can get the position, you can get, you can get the power. But when your convictions are in tension with what the system demands, with what the dominant culture demands, with what even the institutional church demands, the response has to be, we're not bowing! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We're not bowing. Amen. Amen. Now there were some reasons that they could have developed. Some excuses for bowing. 
Amen. Number one, they could have said, well, we'll fall down, but not actually worship the idol. Praise God. Amen. Or they could have said, we'll do it just this one time and repent afterwards. Amen. We're not going to make it a lifestyle. Amen. Have you ever heard that one? It, it, it's not a nice, it's not a lifestyle. I just, amen. Praise God. They could have said, the king has absolute power. God will understand. Or they could have said, the king appointed us. We owe him. Praise God. Loyalty, we owe him. We owe the brother. We owe the sister. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Or they could have said, we need to follow the customs and traditions of the people that we're ministering with. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Or they could have said, we're not hurting anybody else. We're mature adults. We're consenting adults. Praise God. Amen. Or maybe they could have said, you know, it's not going to do us any good for us to get killed. They're just going to appoint pagans to our positions. And then God's people won't have any advocates. We can always come up with human rationalizations. We can always come up with human wisdom. But in the final analysis, their witness would have been compromised. Uh, there would have been a voice in the kingdom. They could not bow. No relativism. Uh, no political correctness. Uh, even in this postmodern era where the world will demand of us at certain levels to compromise. We as the covenant community have to say we're not bowing. Praise God. Praise God. If you believe this, raise your hand and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, the Lord. praise God. Praise God. The king looked at them, and if you read it, read it, reread it home. It says, when they told him that, it says, and he changed his attitude toward them. Raise God. When you don't bow, people are going to change their attitudes toward you. Amen. You're, not long, you're no longer going to have access. Uh, it won't be that easy. When you challenge the system, say amen. When you challenge power, when you challenge... Uh, Things that are contrary to the will of God in your lives. They'll change their attitudes. And you know, you know the story better than me. He, he had the furnace, amen, seven times hotter. And he said he, he got some strong men to bind them. And then it was so, the, the place was so hot that the ones that were supposed to put them in, they died, and, 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 and he threw the three Hebrew children in, and they were bound. Amen? Listen, listen. Amen. And there they were in the fire. Praise God. Not bowing has consequences. I said not bowing has consequences. When you don't bow, there'll be consequences. When you don't bow, you may find yourself in the fire. How many have been in the fire? In the fire. How many have been in the fire for the Lord? In the fire. In the fire. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. In the fire. There's consequences for not bowing. Amen. Praise God. Now listen. Listen. Chapter 3. Then, then the king came to his feet in amazement and asked his advice, weren't they three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? But before then, verse 22, look it says, and these three men firmly tied fell into the blaze. And then it says that he saw the men walking in, walking in the fire. He says, listen, he says, praise God. He says that they were, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire. Listen. Four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. 
listen to this, doing ministry in a situation of captivity. If you stay faithful, if you stay loyal, if you stay committed, they'll try to tie you up, but no human hand will be able to bound you. Praise God. Praise God. No human hand will be able to keep you tied up. Praise God. Praise God. I know they've tried to tie you up. Amen. They tried to keep you under control. The enemy has tried to stop you from growing. You've been misunderstood. Uh, doors have been locked. Uh, you tried to do the right thing, but uh, even elders didn't understand. Uh, they, they tried to tie you up. But if you're in the will, if you're loyal, no human hands uh, will be able to bound you, will be able to keep you tied up. in the fire you'll be walking around praise God praise God praise God I don't know about you but I've walked in the fire amen praise God praise God amen didn't we throw in three I see four unbound and unharmed and one of them looks like the son of the gods. You know, youth workers, I can't guarantee. I wish I could. I wish I could do it for you. I wish I could promise you that if you're faithful to God, he'll keep you out of the fire. But I can't do it. I, can't, I wish I could make that promise. I wish I could promise that you won't suffer, that you won't be misunderstood. I wish I could promise that, that your relationships will be free of conflict. I wish I could promise that your children will always be faithful and loyal. I wish I could promise you that, that, that your leadership will always be an example. I can't, but what I can promise you is this, that you may be in the fire, but God will be there with you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He'll be there in the fire, in the fire. And when they tie you up, he'll loose you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. They stepped out. You know what happened. They, they didn't even smell like fire. But the last verse says, Then the king promoted the three Hebrew children. In the kingdom, promotion comes through the fire. Praise God. Praise God. In ministry, in a situation of captivity, promotion comes through the fire. Praise God. There was this young man in Bible school. And, and, and during the, his first few months, he was having trials. And after a while, he, I guess he got adjusted. He told his professor, Professor, you know, my first few months, I was hectic here. I was going through trials and tribulations. But now, nothing has happened to me. Boy, I've adjusted to this thing. It's smooth, uh, full speed ahead. And the professor got like a worried look on his face. And the professor said, well, you know, I'm very sorry to hear that. He says, because what that kind of means is that Satan's left you alone. You're no longer a threat. Praise God. Praise God. When you're on the front lines. Amen. When, 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 when you're being an instrument of change in the kingdom of God. When you're doing ministry in a situation of captivity. When you're in solidarity with the poor. Amen. When you're speaking to power, systemic and institutional sin. When you're dealing with institutional racism. When you're dealing with gender racism. Praise God. When you're dealing with chauvinism. Amen. When you're dealing with uh, oppression of the poor. When you're dealing with the self-centered rich, even if it's under the guise of prosperity theology. Praise God. We must be faithful to the gospel. And I'm not going to say this evening to you that rich people are not going to get into heaven. I wouldn't dare. But I will say one thing. It's going to be difficult. Praise God. And I didn't say that. Who said it? 
I want to hear it again. Who said it? I want to hear it again. Who said it? He said it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for rich people. Not impossible, but what? Amen. For rich people to get into the kingdom of heaven. So when you're ministering in a situation of captivity, and you're speaking to power, and you're speaking to wealth, and you're speaking to people that their God is money, Praise God. And you're speaking to people that manipulate markets internationally. Amen. To cause oppression of the poor. When you're, when you're talking to people that don't hold up bodegas, but hold up whole nations. Praise God. When you're speaking to people that they profit from the world's misery. Amen. As they perpetually get richer and richer. Praise God. You may find yourself in the fire. Amen. Praise God. But he'll be there with you. Amen. He'll promote you through the fire. Praise God. God is lifting up a generation of young people that says, We're not bowing. We'll use the tools of the empire. We'll educate ourselves in the science and the language of the Babylonians. We'll take their technology. We'll take their, their corporate systems uh, that, that perpetuate better organizational development. But we reject their spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You remember that I said that we would go back to the diet? Amen. Let me conclude. I mean, why didn't they bow? I've asked myself that question. You know, this is a metaphor to some degree, but in the metaphor I've asked, but why didn't they bow? What kept them? And my answer, humbly, is that the reason the three Hebrew children and Daniel didn't bow was that they took the science and the language of the Babylonians, but they stood close to that home diet. And diet is symbolic for what? Nurturing. Diet, nourishment. They stayed close to that indigenous diet. Brothers and sisters, uh, use the tools of the empire. But stay close to home. Praise God. Stay close to culture. Say amen. Stay close to indigenous practices. Uh, stay close to prayer. Say amen. Go to seminary, but stay close to fasting. Praise God. Use everything that all of the exegesis, all of the historical criticism, all of the form criticism, but stay close to that home cooked diet. In it lies the power of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Man, stay close to home. Stay close to home. Don't assimilate. Don't acculturate. Amen. Uh, don't lose your traditions. Don't lose your history. Don't lose uh, your self-concept. Don't lose who you are in God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand. Amen. Let's stand. Father, we come before your presence and we just give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord. You know, you know the lives that are here. Oh, your word is a two-edged sword. It speaks to the inner person. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. You know, young people right now, Lord, that they're moving on up, Lord. You're opening up doors. They're, they're mastering the tools of the empire, the knowledge, the brilliance. Oh, it's overwhelming. We stand in awe of the talents, of the gifts, mastering everything that the dominant culture and worldly systems have. And they're using it for your kingdom. Keep them, Lord. Keep them. Cover them. Cover them. That when the time comes to bow, Lord, when temptation comes and they're asked to violate convictions and principles, uh, that they're asked to violate your word in their lives, that they may say we're not bowing. Hallelujah. They may say, we're not bowing, we're not bowing. Uh, power of the Holy Ghost, cover them. That when they speak to power, when they speak to systems that, that oppress your people, that they may not bow. They may say, thus saith the Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Be with them in the fire, Lord. Loose them in the fire. Oh, when the enemy of the flesh or their ego tries to bind them, loose them for the glory of God. Hallelujah. When institutions demand more loyalty than the kingdom, give them wisdom to choose. In the name of Jesus, keep us, Lord, from being Eurocentric. Amen. In our ideology, keep us from being Latino-centric, Afrocentric. Oh, Lord, keep us rooted in our traditions with a healthy source of pride. But in the final analysis, teach us to transcend our ethnicities, to transcend our cultures, to transcend our historical molding, and understand that ultimately we're one in the kingdom. And that that kingdom is made up of different languages, amen, different cultures, no English only, praise God. Hallelujah. Linguistic diversity. Cultural diversity. Hallelujah. Help us receive the stranger. Receive the immigrant. Oh, in the name of Jesus, let us speak to power with a prophetic voice. Keep us. Keep us. Promote, even as I speak, people that are going through the fire, Lord. Move them to the next level where you want them. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Loose and promote for the glory of your name. For the glory of your name. I'm, I want you to take the hand of the person next to you right now. Right now. And, and, and just as you take that person, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. As you pray for the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that's an obstacle. Amen. For these young men and women to, to minister for you. Loose them. Ego. Pride. Oh. Anything that's flesh. Loose it. For the glory of thy name. Those that are going through fiery trials. Promote them. Be with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As they don't bow. As they don't bow. As they don't bow. Give them strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Cover them, Lord. Cover them. Cover them. We're going to give you glory and honor. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for listening to me. Praise God.